Is Israel actually planning to use the Ark of the Covenant as a weapon in warfare? Well, you know, the Ark of the Covenant was a weapon. The ancient Israelites carried it in battle. Remember the city of Jericho? Well, members of the Israeli parliament or Knesset planned to have the armed forces carry the Ark into battle again in their current Middle East war. First of all, how is that even possible? The real Ark is still missing. But what you likely don't know is that a replica of the Ark of the Covenant was painstakingly constructed over a three-year period. Its creators say to the exact Torah specifications, and it's currently in Israel. And the designer and the Knesset members hope it will be carried into battle soon as a weapon. They also hope it will inspire the building of a third temple on the Temple Mount. Now, I probably don't have to tell you this, but both of these things will just inflame and infuriate their foes, of course. Now, this is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and today we're discussing the future this ark might have. Now, as we said before, it took three and a half years to build the ark, 17 people. They used the original materials discussed in the Torah, acacia wood from Egypt, the exact percentage of gold that the Egyptians used to use in their jewelry, and the gold was hammered, not cast. So it's pretty amazing, and it's to the exact dimensions. The replica ark is on tour of Israel, and it first stopped in Jericho. Appropriately, it was the first Israeli city defeated by the Jews in their holy land after the Exodus. The ark described in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, housed the Ten Commandment tablets, among other holy objects inside it. The replica ark now contains a Torah scroll, which survived the Holocaust. Project financier Louis Topper claimed the ark became, quote, weaponized when the Torah was placed inside it because it is the presence and power of God that makes it a weapon. It was a sacred object with military implications, and they're hoping the replica will have these as well. Several members of the Knesset said that it was meaningful that the Ark and the replica was built now and brought to Jerusalem amid Israel's seven-front war against those who oppose them. There is a very deep connection, believe it or not, between the Philistines, said Simka Rothman, a member of the Knesset and a chairman of its Constitution, Law, and Justice Committee. People thought that the Ark by itself would win wars. The Ark by itself does not win wars, Rothman said. The Ark by itself represents the connection between the people of Israel and Hashem, and by that he means God, and this is what wins wars. And certainly, this would be the only way a replica would be able to operate like this. Ohad Tal, another Knesset member, discussed the symbolism of the replica ark's delivery in wartime. How can we know if we are actually winning this war or not, he said. The first stage is to understand what we're fighting about. Israel's foes launched their attack and called it the flood. This war isn't meant to expand their backyard or improve their education system or create their own country, Tall said. No. They did that to win Jerusalem. For the Temple Mount, they're fighting for their God. The Jewish people are fighting to bring back to the world the unity that the Ark of the Covenant, the Temple, and Jerusalem represent. Jake, the builder of the Ark who wants to remain anonymous, told attendees that the replica Ark might be providing some symbolic military assistance already. We brought it to Israel to get it reattached to all the places it was before. Speaking of it almost as if it was the real Ark, did you notice that? We actually visited Shiloh, he said. We'd like to bring it to a number of military camps as soon as possible. The original idea is to actually bring it then physically into battle. Wow. How would that work? Would it be like the Ark in the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, where, you know, laser beams shot out of the Ark and killed the Nazis who were trying to use it for their own purposes? A member of our advisory team, Michael Tarrant, joked, 
Don't look at it. If you saw the movie, you know exactly what that means. If not, that's a good excuse to see the movie. This is probably also a good point to give a shout out to Michael and Fisherman who researched this video for us. So we have to ask you, was that movie scene in Raiders of a Lost Ark biblical? Did the Ark shoot out lasers back in the days of Jericho and Joshua? <laughs> no, Simka Rothman nailed it when he said the Ark represents the connection between the people of Israel and God, and that's what will win wars. There are four leaders of Israel in the Bible whose armies carried the genuine Ark into battle. It went in front of the marchers around the city of Jericho, Joshua 6, 6-8. Later, Saul brought it into battle, 1 Samuel 14, 18, as did David's men in 2 Samuel 11, 11. It's also very likely that Moses told the priests to take the ark into battle against the Midianites in Numbers 31, 6. Now, although the word ark isn't found in the passage, the vessels of a sanctuary are. What are the vessels of a sanctuary? They likely include the ark. It seems that the ark was a regular part of Israel's battle plans. When they went out to battle, the ark went with them. Now, the most famous of these battles was Jericho, and it describes how the ark was used. If you remember the battle of Jericho, the priests of Israel carried the ark around the city for six days. Then on the seventh day, they circled the city seven times and blew ram swarms and the walls fell down. No reports of lasers were made by Joshua. God knocked down the walls, but it was based on following the specific orders that he gave to Joshua. A crazy battle plan that showed faith in God to win the battle. No faith, no victory. And the ark was the presence of God himself going before the people. The replica of the ark would be thought to be used in the same manner, and those interviewed hoped that it would have the same impact. But it wouldn't, would it? We're going to discuss that in just a moment, but first let's talk about some of the other purposes the Israeli leaders have for the replica ark. First, that's it would inspire Jews worldwide to desire the rebuilding of the temple. The original ark was located in the Holy of Holies in the Temple of Solomon. The Temple Institute has formed all the temple vessels, located priests, and trained them for temple services. Now they have this replica ark as well. But I'm sure you're wondering, now that Jesus has paid the ultimate sacrifice, is the third temple really the direction that God wants Israel to go as a nation? Or would he prefer they repent and cry out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and accept Jesus as Messiah and Son of God? Obviously, it's to repent and accept Jesus. Although prophecy shows this doesn't happen until the end of the 70th week of Daniel. God's desire, however, is for them to repent prior to the Great Tribulation and I'm sure some will. Now that brings us to the third use for the ark. And to me, it's quite controversial. Completion of the project and the replica's delivery to Jerusalem has a very special significance to its creator, Jake, the builder of the ark. Here's what he said. What the ark represents is the fact that the covenant is still valid. It was never abrogated, and the covenant is still strong, he told the attendees. God's commitment to his people is as strong as it was 3,500 years ago when the ark was first built. It should be a weapon that walks in front of the army. We truly believe that it should be both a weapon and inspirational too. End of quote. What covenant is Jake talking about? If he's talking about the Abrahamic covenant, then maybe there's truth in what he says. But what about the Mosaic covenant? It makes a huge difference which one he's talking about. The Abrahamic is the eternal covenant between God and the people of Israel that they will inherit the land from the Nile to the Euphrates. 
But does the replica ark carried before the army represent that covenant? Jake, like many other unbelieving Jews, hasn't read the New Testament and seen that it is actually Jesus, who he would call Yeshua, would win the final war and give the land then to those who repent and cry out to him as Messiah and Son of God. The covenant is eternal, but has nothing to do with the ark going before the army. Perhaps Jake was speaking, though, of the Mosaic covenant, signifying that the Israelis are God's people. Notice, he said it was never revoked. That is, of course, what the New Testament says did happen, that a new covenant is now in place. The Mosaic covenant made on Mount Sinai is no longer valid. It has been replaced by the new covenant in Jesus' blood shed on the cross. Look at how Paul describes the people of God in Romans 11, 17 through 24. He describes them as an olive tree. But if some of the branches were broken off, that's the unbelieving Jews, and you, that is the Gentiles, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree. They were broken off because of their unbelief. How much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back in to their own olive tree? From that, it's pretty obvious that for the present time, unbelieving Israel is broken off from the people of God until they repent and cry out to Jesus. So as a weapon, this replica ark is not weaponized by the placement of a Torah scroll within it. It's missing the heart of the Torah, Yeshua HaMashiach. It takes faith in Jesus to unleash the power of God. Worshiping the Father without the Son isn't worshiping God at all. It's not worshiping Him in His fullness. Look what the Apostle John says, 1 John 2, 22-23. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. It's a very critical understanding that many Christians miss. Yes, God loves the Jewish people, and so do I. And he has an awesome future planned for the remnant. And he will fight for them when the time is right. And that's when they cry out. However, they're not believers right now and are currently opposed to the will and plan of God. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. So the replica not representing him in his fullness is in some ways blasphemous, no matter how exact in its design and materials it is. But what might be the future of this replica? Well, we don't know for sure because the replica ark isn't found in scripture, but we can speculate. Using the ark in battle, as we said at the beginning, will infuriate Israel's enemies, most of whom worship Allah. This is almost taunting them by saying, our God is greater than your God. Well, he is. But remember, Israel is not currently walking in faith in Jesus. So I can imagine a scenario where near the midpoint of the tribulation, the Antichrist army invades Israel and Jerusalem, as scripture tells us, I could imagine the Israeli army in its desperation carrying this replica ark into battle, assuming that it might have some power. However, as scripture foretells, the Antichrist wins at the midpoint, possibly seizing this replica ark. Now, Satan has always desired to capture the holy items from God's temple, just as the Babylonians did and the Romans did in their invasions of Jerusalem in 70 AD and 605 BC. So if that happens, which I think it actually would, if they carry that into battle, how would the Antichrist use this spoil of battle? We know the Ark of the Covenant was God's throne on earth. We also know the Antichrist will sit enthroned in the temple of God at the midpoint of the tribulation. What would be the appropriate place for him to sit? Well, on the ark, right on God's throne. 
And this particular arc is of the exact dimensions of the original arc. That's important because under the Dome of the Rock, there's something called the foundation stone. And in that foundation stone is a notch where the original arc was made to sit. So this arc should probably fit exactly into that original dimension. It could be the real arc if God permits it to be found, or now this replica exists. It might be more likely that he sits on the replica. The Antichrist does this in 2028 at the midpoint. What greater way would he have to indicate that he was victorious over God in Israel than to take the symbol of God's presence and sit on it in the temple? Then we know from Revelation 13, 13, that the false prophet calls down fire from heaven in the presence of the beast. Now, when Solomon first placed the ark in the temple, as per 2 Chronicles 7, 1, fire fell from heaven at that time. As soon as Solomon finished his prayer, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Will Satan try to mimic this as well, using the false prophet? I mean, all this just seems to fit with Satan's M.O. And with what scripture says happens as well. It would be a very inglorious end for this replica ark, if that happens, to be sat on by the man of sin himself. Now, that, of course, is the replica. Where is the genuine ark? We know it was hidden prior to the invasion of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Click right here to learn how Jeremiah and other prophets hid the ark and where the Dead Sea Scrolls say it might be hidden. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.